Today, many know Kendrick Perkins for saying some of sports journalism's worst takes. Well, at least when he talks instead of just acting kind of weird. Every time you, you play against me to strap your shoes up. Oh, 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 oh. That's what happened. That's what happened. <laughs> but this man is actually an NBA champion. After a 14-season career, he showed plenty of signs of his talent as a basketball player. The truth is, he was the starting center for one of the best teams in the history of the league, and he earned more than $57 million during his NBA career. But it's also true that maybe younger basketball fans have not seen him play. Those who have been following the NBA for a while may have forgotten about him due to his mediocre performances. But in reality, how bad was Kendrick Perkins actually? Most people know that winning the 2008 Celtics ring did wonders for Doc Rivers' career. Well, the case of Kendrick Perkins is quite similar, but as a player instead of a coach. During the legendary 2003 draft, Perk was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. Why? Because Boston, which was just a few years away from becoming one of the best teams in the NBA, drafted him with the 27th pick. Little by little, the center was gaining importance in the team's rotation, until he became a starter three years into his career. But what reasons did Doc Rivers have to put him as a starter? Well, there weren't too many players of his size. Kendrick was a competent role player. He was for his entire career. But the truth is that he was also a pretty replaceable role player. His stint with the Celtics would be the highlight of his career, in part because that's when he became an NBA champion. Perkins was the starting center on the impressive team Doc had at his disposal, with Rajon Rondo, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett. And it was clear that this team was destined for glory. But his averages of 6.4 points and 6 rebounds per game don't seem too impressive. The truth is, he didn't have much to do beyond shutting down the paint. On offense, Perkins simply roamed the court, setting screens and occupying the dunker spot, where he was occasionally found by one of the best passers of his generation in Rajon Rondo. His job was simple, but it was also effective. The Celtics beat the Lakers in six games, and suddenly, every team in the league wanted a center of his profile, because after all, he had proven that he worked. Yes, that was the NBA 15 years ago. You could have a player who just did the dirty work on the court, and you could still win. Perkins remained on the team for the next two seasons before being traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Why on earth would a GM as smart as Sam Presti want him? Well, to keep doing the dirty work. This situation, however, was different. When he came to the Thunder, Perkins' efficiency dropped. Not only did the advanced stats say so, but their traditional ones as well. Perk's metrics in Boston indicated that with his defense, he was a slightly above league average player. As soon as he arrived in Oklahoma, this performance just plummeted. A player of his size, whose only role on offense was to score from under the rim, was unable to reach 50% shooting from the field for the rest of his career. The worst part is that Scott Brooks, the Thunder's coach at the time, kept using him as a starter despite his poor performance. Kendrick Perkins dominated tonight. <laughs> Four points. And the reason was simple, and that is that in theory, Perkins knew what a winning team needed. Something important in a roster as young as the one OKC had. Yes, yes, an NBA franchise that had youngsters like Durant, Westbrook, or Harden decided to use as a mentor a guy who years later stated this as the reason for the Rockets being favorites to win a ring. Did you say him losing 20 pounds is going to propel them to the favorites to win a championship? Yes, it is. In a way, no wonder why things didn't work out for the Thunder. But back to the story, Oklahoma did qualify for the 2012 Finals, which pitted the Thunder against the Big Three's Miami Heat. And yes, Perkins was once again the starting center on a finals team. He really was a low-profile piece that you could put on any team without a big man to plug the hole. With averages of 4.8 points and 6.8 rebounds during the 2012 finals, Perkins just offered what he usually offers, but nothing could be further from the truth. His performance was getting worse every year. His contract in Oklahoma was around $8 million a year. Yes, it may not seem like much today, but keep in mind that the salary cap has doubled in the last decade. That $8 million 12 years ago would be the equivalent of almost 20 today. He was a very expensive player for the return he offered, averaging 4.2 points and 5.9 rebounds per game during his stint in OKC. Maybe that salary was the reason Brooks kept using him as a starter for the next two seasons until he realized it wasn't a good idea. In 2015, he was traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers, where he would have an already testimonial role prior to an imminent Bruh. retirement. Mind you, in his brief stint with the Cavs, he had time to play three minutes in the finals, again. And yep, that's basically his career. And since his retirement, Perk has been working with ESPN as an analyst, and, well, he's been kinda successful. Well, I say that because the guy has to be making money. 
I mean, I wouldn't go on TV and say the things he says even if they paid me. <laughs> or, well, maybe I would. But the point is that when Perkins criticizes a player, no one is going to take him seriously. His takes are so far removed from reality that it seems he doesn't live on our planet. The man claimed that the MVP race was rigged because of racial issues. Steve Nash, Jokic, Dirk Nowinski. What do those guys have in common? I'll let you sit. I'll let it sit there and marinate. You think about it. Yes, on public television. But the truth is that the legends of the league have always been ready to answer him. If you know the game of basketball, basketball will give you enough to talk about. The problem is all of these people talking about basketball that don't know basketball. And no, this will never change. His reputation is so damaged, he's at a point of no return as a credible analyst. But hey, at least it's entertaining to watch for whatever reason. To summarize Perkins after his 2008 ring, he became an overrated center who was rotated among some of the best teams in the league. He had a reputation as a decent player because of his role in games where all he had to do was defend, even tricking general managers into offering him contracts way above his actual worth. But beyond that, what did Perkins have as a player to make it in the NBA? Well, Perkins was the typical defensive center of the 2000s. It was a time when teams attacked the paint a lot, and having a 6'10", 270-pounder under the rim certainly helped. The truth is, Perk wasn't a bad defender. For size, he could contain the biggest threats of the era, centers like Yao Ming or Dwight Howard. He was a decent defensive rebounder and relatively efficient for the few shots he did take, and that's it. That's basically all the good things we can say about him. Now comes the bad. With averages of 5.4 points and 5.8 rebounds in 22 minutes per night during his career, Perkins was one of the worst offensive players in the entire NBA. And when I say one of the worst, I mean bottom 5%, early, mid, and late in his career. Despite his huge frame, he was not able to become an efficient scorer from the low post, basically because he didn't have any kind of technique. He couldn't score from mid-range, and at best, he had some touch from 8 feet, from where he was still below average efficiently. He didn't have any handles, and I say this with knowledge. The f is that? Basically because any high school kid has a deeper bag than him watching this video. He also wasn't a good passer. As for 813 assists in his NBA career, he committed 1,233 turnovers. He wasn't able to score free throws. He wasn't able to defend on the perimeter because of his lack of agility. And in general, he had a very questionable basketball IQ. Hmm, did I leave anything out? Or can I catch my breath now? Bottom line, Perkins was in the NBA because he was big. Skills-wise, there are tens of thousands of better players who aren't even pros. He was fortunate to come into the league, as we've said, at the right place and right time. If Perkins had been drafted today, in this pace and space era, I can assure you he wouldn't have lasted two seasons in the league. But because of his timing, not only did he get high-value contracts, but also that performance has allowed him to have a good career in the media.